dear sisters and brothers, let us wait upon God for God's word to flow into our hearts. In the book of Job, God says, you keep your thoughts, you open your heart to my thoughts. Often we think a lot, we speak a lot. In the wake of speaking and thinking, we do not give time to understand what God has to speak to us. God has his own thoughts and we need to mold our thoughts, our vision of life according to God's word. Let's pray for a moment, asking God to open our hearts, to receive his word and to be molded in the power of God's word. Speak, Lord, your servants and handmaids are listening to you. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, some years ago, a young medical college student came to me. He had a grievance. He was doing his third year medicine. Suddenly he began to feel that medicine was not his field. He made a wrong choice to come to the medical studies. I asked him, was it not your choice to go to the medical college? He said, yes. At that time, I had thought I needed to be a doctor. He said he thought of the great service he could do to humanity, the suffering humanity with his medical training. But now, as two years went by, he began to feel he made a wrong choice. He asked his parents whether he could change his college and go for engineering because he thought some of his friends who were doing engineering course were very happy with that course. He also wanted to go for engineering, but he said his parents were not able to afford to get him admission for engineering. They spent a lot of money to get him admission for medicine, and they were encouraging him and compelling him to stay in the medical studies. But he was so unhappy, so angry, he began to drink and take to smoking, a very unhappy man that he was. I remember a young lady once came to me. She also had a problem. She was married, having two children. But now she began to feel she made a wrong choice in choosing her husband. She was complaining that it was because of the parents that she was compelled to make this choice. She had a boyfriend in the college and she thinks if she had married her boyfriend, she would have been a happier wife, a more blessed mother. Even when she looks at her children, 
she was not happy. Her children did not look as pleasant and beautiful as she wanted them to be. And she blames it on the husband. He asked her, did you not make a decision to this marriage? She said, yes. Though she felt the parents were for this marriage, she had made a clear decision, a clear decision to marry this man. Moreover, her boyfriend had already chosen someone else. And happily, she entered into marriage. But now, she was very unhappy about her choice. A third case, a businessman once came to me. He also was very unhappy with his business. His friends who studied with him went into other trades, some into business, some into other professions. And he was making good money in business. And yet, he feels if someone could help him to invest more money into his business, he could reap a greater profit. Every day when he counts his balance, he would be unhappy. The thought was, I could have made better profits. I could have been a richer man if I could invest more money into his business. My dear brothers and sisters, three very unhappy people. And perhaps the numbers are more than I know. A lot of people today are very unhappy about the choices they made in life. I made a mistake is a chorus we hear often. I made a mistake. I could have become someone happier. I could have become someone greater. I could have become someone richer if I had made another decision, another choice in life. There is something common to all of us. There is a comparison on our mind. I compare my state of life with other people who have made it bigger in life, who look richer and happier. When I compare, I become very unhappy, very dissatisfied with my own way of living. And this, I believe, it's very common today, people very unhappy about their ways of living, comparing themselves with others. What is the reason behind this? I believe the Bible answers us. The reason behind this is hard-heartedness. I become so selfish, I become so hard-hearted, I'm not able to find the face of God, the plan of God in my life. Let me read for you from the letter of St. Paul to Corinthians, the first letter, chapter 10, verse 31. So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything.
for the glory of God. The word of God is exhorting us to do everything for the glory of God. Even eating and drinking. Whatever else I am doing, I do everything for the glory of God. Again, St. Paul is telling us in the first letter to Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. What is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus? The will of God is that we thank him for everything. It is only when we are able to come to God praying, praising and thanking God for all things happening to us. It is only then we are able to rejoice. Our joy is what wells up from within us. There is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is what comes from outside. I eat a little ice cream and I'm happy. I got a gift and I'm happy. Someone said something good about me. I'm happy. The source is outside of me. I feel happy because of something happening to me, someone doing something to me. That's happiness. But joy, joy wells up from within me, from within us, the joy of the Holy Spirit. This joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in my heart. In order to be able to rejoice always, the one thing to do is to come praying, is to come praising God all the time. Even when we are praying, our prayer could make us very unhappy because we make a mistake in praying. When I come praying, I'm asking God, I'm asking God to give me what I want. Of course, we must come to God to pray for what we want. But then prayer is not only speaking to God, prayer is also listening to God, waiting upon God to listen to what God has to tell me. When I offer my prayers to my God, I must be waiting upon God to learn what God has to tell me. Jesus in Gethsemane, he did pray, Abba, Father, let this bitter childish go away from me. And yet, he added, not my will, let your will be done. He was open to the will of the Father, and that's when the messenger, the angel came to him to comfort him, to strengthen him, to accept the will of God. So the fact that I'm praying does not mean I will be able to rejoice. My prayer must be listening to God. When I listen to what God has to tell me, I begin to praise God for all that God does to me. Everything that happens to me, I accept from the hands of God, praising and thanking God. There are many blessings that God is giving us the blessings for which we do not thank God are blessing. When I do not accept thanking and praising God, that blessing 
need not become blessed to me. I'm not happy, I'm not joyful about the blessings of God. One thing we need to know, the blessings we do not accept, praising and thanking God, rejoicing in the presence of God, will soon become a non-blessing. Will soon become a curse. Well, this is often happening to us. I'm not able to appreciate the blessings God gives me. There is something significant in the Bible. God's blessings not recognized and accepted by the people. There is a phenomenon in the Old Testament. The people of God were brought out of the land of Egypt. We are told God brought them out with a mighty arm, defeating the powerful emperor, Pharaoh. And when the people came out, rejoicing and praising God in the beginning, soon they forgot all about God's activity, God's saving power. They began to grumble against God. And in Elim, in the desert, the people of God were very hungry. When they were hungry, they began to complain. They said, in Egypt, though it was slavery, though we had cruel masters, we often got our flesh pots to satisfy our hunger. But here we are starving. The people complained. And God, in his infinite generosity, gave them manna in the desert. We read in Exodus Chapter 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather the daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. God was so good. God gave them manna bread from heaven. They needed not work. All that they should do was to gather the daily portion for their survival. And they were very happy. When we go to chapter 16, Exodus chapter 16, verse 31, we understand how much the people appreciated the manna given to them. Chapter 16, verse 31. The Israelites called the food manna. It was like coriander seed, but white. And it tasted like wafers made with honey. A great appreciation. Manna, the gift of God, the daily bread they received tasted like honey. And that meant they were very happy with that great blessing of God. But soon they were getting tired of this food from heaven. When we come to the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 8, they were not happy with the manna, and therefore they began to do some cooking. Numbers chapter 11, verse 8. Manna was like coriander seed and had the appearance of bedellium. When they had gone about and gathered it up, the people would grind it between millstones or pound it in a mortar 
then cook it in a pot and make it into loaves which tasted like cakes made with oil. When there was no more wafers tasting like honey, they had to add something of their own. They cooked it and made them loaves. But then they tasted like cakes made with oil. The standard is lowered. There is no more honey. It was oil, loaves made with oil. But then, something very significant. When we come to book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 5, the people were disgusted with manna, we are told. Let me read for you. The people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there's no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. We are disgusted with this wretched food. Something they accepted as honey. So sweet, so white, so pleasant. It tasted wretched in their mouths. What happened here? The people began to be hard-hearted. They could not accept God's generosity. They could not accept God's blessing, praising and thanking God. It's not that something went wrong with manna, no. Something went wrong with them. They did not praise and thank God for the great blessing God was giving them. They did not come before God thanking and worshiping and adoring for the infinite generosity of God. Therefore, even the blessing that they received looked like a curse. Wretched food, they said. My dear brothers and sisters, in our day-to-day -day life, this could happen to you and to me. There are many things that today we do not appreciate what God has given us, the air we breathe. To understand how precious the air that we are breathing it's enough to look at an asthmatic patient or someone in the ICU trying to breathe hard on a ventilator. We breathe so free, so pleasant, so spontaneous, and yet, when did I thank God last for the air that I am breathing? The air that I am breathing, the food that I am eating, the people I have around me, the water I am drinking, and this marvelous earth I am living in. I have taken all the blessings for granted, so granted that I do not praise God anymore. I spoke to that medical student I, I spoke to him. I said, my friend, only very few youngsters of your age have been able to get admission for medicine in this country. There are thousands and thousands of youngsters who would love to enter into a medical college. Either they are not able to because of their financial constraints or they are not able to study. But God gave you the capacity to study. God gave you the admission in a medical college. Have you ever thanked God for it? He said, no. He never thanked God for the blessing 
of an admission, of a possibility of studying medicine and becoming a doctor. I told him, that's your problem. You have taken that great blessing for granted. So that blessing is not a blessing for you anymore. And therefore, you're comparing it with other people doing other courses. Again, I told that lady who was complaining about her husband, I told her, you never thanked God, did you, for the blessing of your husband? The word of God is very clear. In every marriage, it is God himself who chooses and makes and gives the spouse to each other. God said in Genesis 2.18, waiting to give Adam a wife, God put Adam to sleep. It's something very beautiful. God put Adam to sleep that every man, every woman should know in the choice of the spouse. The man, the woman had nothing to say. God said, you sleep. Let me give the fitting partner for you. It's God who gives the fitting partner. Your partner is God's own gift. Your partner is God's own make. Your partner is God's own blessing. I told this lady, you never thanked God for the great blessing that God has given us. No wonder that blessing has become a curse for you. You're unhappy about that blessing of God. Again, I told the businessman, you are greedy. The greed, the sin of greed has gripped your heart. Therefore, you are not able to understand what God has done for you to give you a business, a thriving business, and yet not as thriving as you want to be. And if you do not praise and thank God for this blessing, you will never be able to appreciate and admire and acknowledge the blessing that God has given you. Today, as we listen to God's word, every one of us, we could be sad about something going wrong with our lives. We could be comparing our blessings with the blessings of others. I could have become someone greater. I could have become someone richer. I could have earned something bigger. That thought comes not from God. That thought comes from the devil who wants to destroy the blessings of God. Exactly what the devil said to Eve. God gave a paradise to Adam and Eve. A beautiful paradise for all the satisfaction of the man and the woman. And yet, the devil put discontent, discontent in the heart of the woman and the man. The devil said, you could become like God. You could become like God. Why do you need a God when you can become like God? And that temptation, Eve fell for. And that's when we lost the paradise. That devil, the demonic power is crawling around, coming to you and to me. Let's be able to understand that everything God has given me is a blessing. And praise and thank God for that blessing, for every blessing God has given us. That is what makes us happy. Let me read for you once again from Thessalonians, where St. Paul tells us, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. To be able to rejoice always, we need to praise and thank God and thus accept everything in life 
as God's own intervention, as God's own gift, as God's own blessing. That's a way to make a life a joyous experience on this earth. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all that you have given us. We are nothing. We are born with nothing. And yet, all that you have given us is what we have today. We come to you praising and thanking you, O oh God, for your blessing. Give us the grace to rejoice always, praising and thanking you. Amen. Thank you.